Hi, you're watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel and today I'm going to talk about this. This is the Raspberry Pi version 3. Uh, you can buy this one for around 35 bucks on the different online stores. And I'm going to show you how you can use this as a synth or as a music production tool. And be prepared, there are a lot of pitfalls you can avoid and I'm going to walk through that uh, step by step. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let's begin this journey by determining which things you actually need and which are optional. You'll need to buy a Raspberry Pi. This is version 3, which you can buy for around 35 bucks at your favorite retailer online or offline. The audio interface you've seen in the intro and attached to my Pi here is optional as I'll explain in this video. You'll also need an SD card. You should buy a Class 10 SD card with at least 16GB of storage capacity. In this video I'll use the Korg Nano Control to tweak synth parameters like filter cutoff frequency and LFO speed. This is completely optional. If you have a MIDI controller providing some knobs and keys, you can skip this purchase. I'll also use the MIDI controller and the MIDI interface in this video. This one is a standards compliant USB to MIDI adapter, which should be less than 10 bucks. And finally, I bought a cheap standards compliant USB audio interface, which is recommended for reducing the overall audio latency. Watch the video to find out how this worked out. Okay, you've obtained the hardware. Now you need to download and install some software. First, get the noobs really? zip file from Raspberry's webpage. You'll also need to download and install an SD card formatter for Windows or Mac. And it's warmly recommended to download and install the VNC viewer, which will allow you to access the Pi's graphical user interface on your PC. Now, insert the SD card into your PC and format it with the ST formatting app. Then, unzip the noobs file and transfer everything from the root folder to your SD card. Unplug the SD card from your PC and insert it into your Raspberry Pi. For the first step, you need to connect a USB mouse and keyboard to your Pi. You'll also need an HDMI cable to connect the Pi to a TV or a monitor. Turn on the Pi by connecting a USB Type 2 cable to the USB port. Choose the first option in the installer, the Debian Linux distribution tailored for the Raspberry Pi, and walk through the installation process, which will take around half an hour. After that, the machine will reboot and you'll find yourself on the desktop. The first thing you might want to do here is to turn on Secure Shell and VNC access. You can do so by clicking on the Pi button, then Preferences and then Raspberry Pi Configuration. On the Interface tab, make sure the SSH and VNC buttons are enabled, then press OK to store these settings. With that out of the way, now let's install some music software. Press the Pi button again, then Preferences and then Add or Remove Software. In the search bar, type in Synth and press Enter. Then check anything you find interesting. In this example, I chose a package of vintage synthesizer emulators called Bristol, a sound phone player named QSynth and two virtual analog synthesizers named AMSynth and SynthV1. Press OK to confirm your selection and wait for the packages to be installed. Now at this point I was really happy that things went so smoothly. I'm really not sure if I was working with Linux here, but well, you don't know Jack. Having installed all the software, I was really eager to try Bristol first. Its huge selection of vintage synth emulations seemed really enticing. Interestingly, it was nowhere to be found in the start menu. 
but never mind, this is Linux, so working on the console is expected. The shell command told me to use the start Bristol script, which then provided me with some useful startup options like selecting the emulated machine and scaling the user interface. Unfortunately, there was no sound coming from the audio jack. But why? After searching the internet for what felt like days, I finally found a blog telling me that I need to start a program called QJackCTL first, where I needed to set up my audio configuration. So I started the program, opened the connections menu and found that Bristol provided no media input on the ALSA page. Consulting the start Bristol script with the minus minus help option, I discovered there was a command line option minus ALSA which forces Bristol to use ALSA's media interface. Neat. Now, I could connect my audio apps and I was able to test the DX7 emulator provided by Bristol. It's great. And here's Bristol's rendition of the Kirk Poly 6. But the best software synth is clearly the app named Synth V1. It's the one you heard in the intro. It has all the features you expect from a virtual analog synth, and the control matrix can be modified to your needs, allowing for custom live tweaking of sounds. But while I was playing around with this synth, I noticed some weird audio glitches, which was strange because the CPU still had a lot of headroom, as you can see here. But Jag's log showed some errors named XRun Callback. A quick search on the internet suggested that the Pi's internal sound card can't handle all the stuff going on, and that installing an external USB audio interface is a solution. Any standards compliant interface should work, they said. So I was like, ah, that's fine, I have this boss recorder here, which also is an audio interface. But Linux was like, ah, no. So I said, well, okay, I've also got the Zoom R24 here, which happens to be an excellent audio interface, and Linux was like, I said, no. So I said, okay. I'll buy a cheap USB audio stick from your compatibility list. And Linux was like, what about hell no? And I was like, fine, okay. But I digress. I wanted to show you how to set up the Pi so you can turn it on without a monitor attached and it always boots up your favorite synth and adjusts the sound system accordingly. To achieve this, you need to set up a patch bay in QJackCTL. This is pretty straightforward. Just press the patch bay button, then press the new button and press no to the dialog prompt. Now, press the add button and add all the interfaces you can find on both the input and the output list. Once you're done, you must then connect your input and output devices. Save the setup and remember its file name. In this example, it's Reload XML. Press the Activate button to start the Jack server. Now I'm going to configure Synth V1's controls to react to the Nano Control. In the Nano Controls Windows app, you can look up the CC numbers assigned to all the knobs and sliders and their respective range of values transmitted. 
memorizing this, click on Help in Synth V1, then on Configure and then on Controllers. Here you'll find a list of controller setups. Click the Add Controller button and then adjust the CC number according to your MIDI controller setup and select the destination for those control changes. In this example, I want the leftmost knob to control filter cutter frequency for oscillator 1. The Nanu Controls app tells me that this knob is sending on CC86, so let's write that into Synth V1's control scheme. Now, continue with all the knobs and sliders you want to use, and when finished, press OK. For the Pi to run your synth at startup, you must in the last step create a boot script. This is quite simple. Open the text editor and enter the lines you see on screen here. In line 2, you can see we're launching QJack CTL with an minus A option, pointing at the file location of the configuration XML file we created previously. After saving this script, you'll need to add a line in the end of your .profile file in your home directory. Again, load this into a text editor and add the line shown here at the end of the file. Save this and in the next boot, the Pi will also launch QJack CTL and Synth V1, so congratulations! Now you have a battery-powered screenless mini VA synth booting within 20 or 30 seconds. Yeah, and that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode and learned something new. I certainly did, and I will avoid this um, Jack and Elsa system like the plague in the future. But um, maybe you have a different opinion, and if you do, please write it in the comments below. And if you want me to continue exploring uh, the possibilities of the Raspberry Pi and Linux and um, open source software, yeah, please leave a comment. And um, as always, thanks for watching and have a good holiday in 2019 and see you again in 2020. Bye bye and thanks for all your support it's during the last year. I really enjoyed talking to you and discussing with you in the YouTube comments and on Woody Piano Shags uh, Discord server where I usually hang out with the cool guys there. And um, yeah, maybe you want to join us there and then we can talk about um, synthesizers and stuff and electronic music or other music. And yeah, see you, bye bye.